touched upon in previous videos but never really gone into any depth with our alignments and I'd like to go over those real quick before I continue the class overview series because there's a lot that goes into talking about classes and alignments are one of those things because there are a lot of classes that can only be of certain alignments. Alignments are in game terms the general way that a character acts in accordance with his beliefs and his moral setup and this is done with a nine-point moral compass. Now this can be as broad as good or evil, or even finer than the nine that I'm going to go over in this video. It's even changed from edition to edition, and AD&D was the first time that the good-evil axis was even introduced into the game systems. So up until AD&D, you were either lawful, neutral, or chaotic. You didn't have good or evil choices. And it's been retained, these nine alignments have been retained in all editions but fourth, where it was pared down to lawful good, good, unaligned, evil, and chaotic evil. In fifth edition, the most recent one that's come out, they've gone back to the nine alignment axis, and we're going to be going over that today, along with some examples for each of these alignments. First off, we have lawful good. Lawful good is best defined as being compared to the knights of the old days of chivalry. Courage, honor, virtuous behavior towards the opposite sex, willing to help those weaker and downtrodden, and basically laws of being able to protect those that you place under your protection. Basically, follow the law of the land, be a good guy. Some great examples in modern fiction of these virtuous people, these lawful good characters, are such people as Superman from the Christopher Reeves portrayal. Sorry, only one ride to a customer. Tyrion Lannister from Game of Thrones. Rob Stark to hear us. We're going to have to speak louder. What is the meaning of this? What kind of knight beats a helpless girl? The kind who serves his king imp. Careful now. We don't want to get blood all over your pretty white cloak. Someone get the girl something to cover herself with. She's to be your queen. Have you no regard for her honor? I'm punishing her. For what crimes? She'd not fight her brother's battle, you half-wit. You can't talk to me like that. The king can do as he likes. The mad king did as he liked. Has your uncle Jamie ever told you what happened to him? No one threatens his grace in the presence of the king's guard. I'm not threatening the king, sir. I am educating my nephew. Bronn, the next time Sir Merwin speaks, Kill him. That was a threat. See the difference? Captain Picard from Star Trek The Next Generation. What you're doing here is unethical. It's immoral. I'll fight it. We must attack! I do not fire on defenseless people. These are all examples of people who exhibit, for the most part, Lawful good behavior. Neutral good characters are dedicated to helping others according to their own needs. They may be at odds with the law at times, but they are fair and balanced in their allocation of action. Some examples of a neutral good character can include people like Captain Malcolm Reynolds from Firefly and Serenity. Someone ever tries to kill you, you try to kill him right back. Mercy is the mark of a great man. Oh. Oh. Guess I'm just a good man. Oh. 
Oh, I'm all right. Luke Skywalker and Qui-Gon Jinn from the Star Wars series. Now, I would like to point out that the Luke Skywalker example is leaning more towards his actions in Return of the Jedi, where he is more balanced in his sense of good instead of running off to save the princess because, oh my god, she's pretty. You failed, Your Highness. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Qui-Gon Jinn being mindful, always reminding Anakin and Obi-Wan to be mindful of the living force, not really caring about the future, not caring about the past so much, being mindful of the present and things going on in that moment, strikes me as a very neutral stance. You know, be aware of the now, be aware of what's about to happen. You know, deal with what happens when it happens. That's kind of a, a fairly balanced point of view in my mind. He is headstrong, and he has much to learn of the living force, but he is capable. There is little more he can learn from me. And, of course, we wouldn't be anywhere without some chaotic good characters. Chaotic good characters tend to do as their conscience dictates, regardless of what others expect of them. They can do, be a bit tough to rein in and can sometimes act without a lot of foresight. They do the right thing, not because they're good people necessarily, but because it's the right thing to do. Examples of chaotic good characters are characters such as V from V for Vendetta. Good evening, Lumnata. Allow me first to apologize for this emergency channel. I do, like many of you, appreciate the comforts of the everyday routine, the security of the familiar, the tranquility, repetition. Bloody hell. I enjoy them as much as any bloke. But in the spirit of commemoration, whereby those important events of the past, usually associated with someone's death or the end of some awful bloody struggle, are celebrated with a nice holiday, I thought we could mark this November the 5th a day that is sadly no longer remembered by taking some time out of our daily lives to sit down and have a little chat. There are, of course, those who do not want us to speak. We think, just let me I think. I expect even now, orders are being shouted into telephones and men with guns will soon be on their way. It's Chancellor Sutler. Damn it! Why? Because while the truncheon may be used in lieu of conversation, words will always retain their power. Words offer the means to meaning, and for those who will listen, the enunciation of truth. And the truth is, there is something terribly wrong with this country, isn't there? You... Gregory House from House MV. I know you're in there. I can hear you caring. And Han Solo from Star Wars. Java. Over my dead body. Yes, I bet you have. Sorry about the mess. Now, I will like to point out that this was a point of contention in my research group about Han being chaotic good. I would like to point out at this point that any of these characters that I mentioned for any of these alignments, a good argument can be made for them to be a different alignment. This is just how I feel these characters fit in with the standard nine axis, so that's where we're going from. If you feel that I have made an error, please post a comment in the comment section. And let me know somebody else that might be a better fit for the alignments. Or if you think that a character I mentioned isn't of this alignment, but of another alignment, please, again, feel free to drop a comment down in the comment section. Now, going on from good, we have the neutral alignments. Starting off, we have lawful neutral. Lawful neutral characters tend to follow laws, traditions, and personal codes. They usually try not to pick a side, but they can be convinced to help if it fits in with their own worldview. Now, finding examples of lawful neutral, true neutral, and chaotic neutral characters was a little tricky. Because neutral is not really an alignment that you see in a lot of modern movies, a lot of TV, things like that. It's really 
shows up a lot in gaming because you can because it's one of those things you can pick for NPCs especially. But in movies, you don't see a lot of lawful neutral characters. Now, some examples of lawful neutral include characters like Dredd from Judge Dredd. They're not evidence of pink trees. This is Judge Dredd. Let him talk. In case you people have forgotten, this block operates under the same rules as the rest of the city. Mama is not the law. I am the law. Mama is a common criminal. Guilty of murder. Guilty of the manufacture and distribution of the narcotic known as slow-mo. And as of now, under sentence of death. And Simon Tan from Firefly. Now, I expect that's going to take some explaining, but if you have watched Firefly, Simon does tend to follow his own personal code of law. He won't let it, people be injured or die if he can help it. But at the same time, he's not going to do anything that's going to endanger him or his sister. Yes, I'd forgotten you're moonlighting as a criminal mastermind now. Got your next heist plan? No. But I'm thinking about growing a big black mustache. I'm a traditionalist. True neutrals, also sometimes called just neutral, are characters who tend to stay clear of moral questions and avoid taking actions or picking a side, if at all possible. They can sometimes be aloof and cold on the exterior, despite what their actual feelings are. Now, some good examples of true neutral characters are Treebeard from Lord of the Rings. It's talking, Mary. The tree is talking. Tree? I am no tree. I am an ant. And whose side are you on? Side. I am on nobody's side. Because nobody is on my side, little hawk. Or Snake Plissken from Escape from New York and Escape from L.A. It tells you you'd better hope I didn't make it back. You push that button. Everything we've accomplished for the past 500 years will be finished. Our technology, our way of life, our entire history. We'll have to start all over again. For God's sakes, don't do it, Snake! My name's Plissken. Both characters tried to stay clear of the conflict and got out of it as fast as they possibly could. But when it came down to it, they just couldn't ignore something that had a direct influence on them. Snake Plissken being forcibly interjected and Treebeard just having a moment of rage. Cha chaotic Neutral. Chaotic neutral characters hold personal freedom above everything else. These characters tend to follow their whims at the merest suggestion. These are the eccentric people of the world, the people that drive other characters up a wall, and sometimes even their DMs. Great examples of chaotic neutral characters are characters like Captain Jack Sparrow from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I must admit, Jack, I thought I had you figured. It turns out you're a hard man to predict. Me, I'm dishonest. And a dishonest man you can always trust to be dishonest. Honestly, it's the honest ones you want to watch out for. Because you can never predict they're going to do something incredibly stupid. <laughs> Why should I sail with any of you? Four of you have tried to kill me in the past. One of you succeeded. Murder Tam from Firefly and Serenity. Also, I can kill you with my brain. Human body can be drained of blood in 8.6 seconds given adequate vacuuming systems. See, morbid and creepifying 
I got no problem with, long as she does it quiet like. And of course, the most based version of chaotic neutral that anybody in my group could come up with, Q from Star Trek The Next Generation. Jean-Luc, sometimes I think the only reason I come here is to listen to these wonderful speeches of yours. And this. Moi? What makes you think I'm either inclined or capable to terminate this encounter? If we all die here, yeah. now, you will not be able to gloat. You wanted to frighten us. We're frightened. You wanted to show us that we were inadequate for the moment. I grant that. You wanted me to say, I need you. I need you! Position? 070, Mark 63, sir. Back where we started. That was a difficult admission. Another man would have been humiliated to say those words. Another man would have rather died than ask for help. I understand what you've done here, Q. But I think the lesson could have been learned without the loss of 18 members of my crew. If you can't take a little bloody nose, maybe you ought to go back home and crawl under your bed. It's not safe out here. So, lawful evil. These villains take what they can methodically, following a personal code, loyalty, or tradition. These are dictators that frown upon disobedience and often react harshly. Their numbers include Darth Vader from Star Wars. I'm a member of the Imperial Senate on a diplomatic mission to Alderaan. You are part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. Take her away! Dolores Umbridge from the Harry Potter series. You're going to be doing some lines for me today, Mr. Potter. No, not with your quill. I'm going to be using a rather special one of mine. Now. I want you to write, I must not tell lies. How many times? Well, let's say for as long as it takes for the message to sink in. You haven't given me any ink. Oh, you won't need any ink. Nothing. That's right. Because you know, deep down, you deserve to be punished. And the Cybermen from Doctor Who. Now, yes, I am aware that the Cybermen are actually somewhat unbiased. And there's actually a lot of arguments made in my group that they could actually have been true neutral because they are following programming. But since they are cast as the villain in Doctor Who, they're falling under lawful evil. We have been upgraded. Into what? The next level of mankind. 
neutral evil. Now, neutral evil characters were a little harder to pin down. Neutral evil characters do whatever they can get away with without qualms or compassion. They think only of themselves and will only help others if it's going to help them in the long run. Some examples of neutral evil characters that we came up with are people like Lex Luthor from Superman. Make deals with criminals. I control everything in this town, Superman. Your cooperation is not really necessary. The offer was merely a courtesy. You will never control me, Luthor. Never! Well then, I guess I'll have to kill you. Respect, you have a photographic memory. I'm too modest to boast. The real purpose of Cadmus was to give you superpowers. And to ruin Superman's reputation. Imagine how sweet it will be when I save the world from the menace of the Justice League. Now, when I kill Superman, they'll build statues in my honor. Maybe next time. That was uncalled for. Max Shrek from Batman Returns. Okay. Go ahead. Intimidate me. Bully me if it makes you feel big. I mean, it's not like you can just kill me. Actually, it's a lot like that. <laughs> huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> you know, for a second there, you really frightened me. <laughs> And Loki from Thor. And what will you do if I vow to spare him? Not let you out. Oh, no, but I like this. Your world in the balance, and you bargain for one man. Regimes fall every day. I tend not to weep over that. I'm Russian. Where I was. And what are you now? It's really not that complicated. I got red in my ledger. I'd like to wipe it out. you wipe out that much red? Drakov's daughter? Sao Paulo? The hospital fire? Barton told me everything. Your ledger is dripping. It's gushing red, and you think saving a man no more virtuous than yourself will change anything? This is the basest sentimentality. This is a child of prayer. Pathetic! You lie and kill in the service of liars and killers. You pretend to be separate, to have your own code, something that makes up for the horrors. But they are part of you, and they will never go away. I won't touch Barton, not until I make him kill you, slowly, intimately, in every way he knows you fear. And then he'll wake just long enough to see his good work. And when he screams, I'll split his skull. This is my bargain, you mewling quim. Chaotic evil. Whether driven by greed, hatred, bloodlust, or insanity, these characters will act with wanton violence and leave anarchy in their wake. Notable exceptions of chaotic evil characters include Joker from Batman, especially the Nolan Batman movies. Introduce a little anarchy. Upset the established order and everything becomes chaos. I'm an agent of chaos. Oh, and you know the thing about chaos? It's bare. You live. You die. Now we're talking. Bellatrix Lestrange from Harry Potter. of a clock 
for forage. Right, Pete, check the rest of the house. Ten. <laughs> Now, I make that caveat on Alex because near the middle of the movie, he acts very much like a victim, but there's no two ways about it in the beginning of the movie and especially near the end of the movie. Alex is just a twisted, deranged fucker. Arguments can be made for each character to go one way or the other. And it's all based on whim, adaptation, who's playing the character, what version of the adaptation, what, at, even at what point in the adaptations. Luthor, for example, has been lawful evil, chaotic evil, neutral evil, and I think even at one point in time he could have been described as just plain neutral. Now Reynolds and Picard are the same way. They can be argued into lawful neutral for Picard and chaotic good or even... New, true neutral for Mal Reynolds. So these are very broad definitions of the alignments, and their their descriptions are almost pulled verbatim from the fifth edition handbook, with some exceptions, where I tweak the words a little bit. And even in long running groups, alignments can be cause of heated debate. For example, lawful good. Be a good guy. Follow the rules. Don't be a don't be a dick. That's essentially what a lot of people look down, look at when they see lawful good. But there are so many people who play lawful good as just this rigid character of following the law. You know, he must have honorable combat, whether he's facing a den of thieves or a nest of demons. Which is why lawful good does not get played a whole lot. Which is why paladins kind of fell to the wayside for a while because. For the longest time, a lot of people equated lawful good with lawful stupid. And it doesn't have to be. Just be a good guy. Follow the rules. Have a personal code. You know, don't, hit, don't attack unarmed opponents. Give them the chance to surrender. Be honorable. That's all lawful good is. It, you're an honorable character. You're a knight. You're a samurai. It, that's, that's what lawful good are. Now, for you DMs out there who have never really messed with alignments before, I always find this a good idea to sit down with your group and set a baseline for, from the, for what the alignments are. Now, that's not saying that as the DM you sit down and you dictate what the alignments are. No. Sit down and form a consensus with your players. Have a baseline that, you know, lawful good includes this but does not go past this point. Chaotic neutral is this, but does not go past these boundaries. You know, have a, a guideline so that your character knows when he's not acting according to his alignment. And usually that's how you sit, can sit there and after the game or during a break when people are doing a food run or anything like that, you can pull that, character, that player aside and say, you know, you're kind of skirting the edge of leaving your alignment. We, we either need to address this or we need to come up with a way in game that's causing it and a lot of the times it's not a bad idea to keep track of your players and how their alignments are corresponding with their way they're role playing their characters because sometimes the player doesn't really know what an alignment means as far as how to act and that's always a good teachable moment. The, the better the game runs, you know, if you run your game without worrying about alignments past good and evil, that's fine. 
if you have more than nine alignments, you know, you have six divisions on the good axis, just so the characters have a broader way of acting besides just lawful neutral or chaotic good, that's fine. All I wanted to do in this video was bring up the bases that are outlined in the handbooks and give some examples. So now that we've gone over this, go out there, have a blast. Use the alignments in more than just in your villains. Use the alignments in your town folk, in your own characters when you play a character. And remember, the only difference between a neutral and a chaotic good character is whether they're Greedo shot first or Han. Lone Star, now you see that evil will always triumph because good is dumb.